need to explore is deep within all of us. Our ancestors crossed mountain ranges, sailed open oceans to map new lands, and sought out the unknown while always looking to the stars. We're curious, and now we're at a place where we can pioneer new horizons. Because Earth, this blue planet, and all its beauty is just our starting place. It's 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, then you start, 2, 1. descendants look to the stars, perhaps from a rocky moon or colonies floating in open space, they'll remember this time. When they reflect on where it started, they'll remember this place. And when they honor those first explorers who said, let's go, this is Blue Moon, they'll remember these bold steps. We are of blue origin. And this is just the beginning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Launch Site One here in West Texas, where we're flying a full manifest of six astronauts for the third time on New Shepard and the fifth human flight overall. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kaya Ehrlich. And howdy, I'm Eddie Seifert. Some amazing people on board today. Victor Vescovo, Katja Chacerreta, Hamish Harding, Jason Robinson, Victor Cogea España, and for his return to space, Evan Dick. I'm very excited about this international crew. Here they are all suited up for their official team photo. I'm really looking forward to sharing more about this impressive crew later in the show. But first, let's take a look at the impact New Shepard has already had on commercial human spaceflight. I think that historians will look back at the early 21st century as a really important time in the expansion of humanity into the solar system. Jeff Bezos is about to blast off into space. People that have been on this journey has changed their outlook on humanity. I think space is really our future. We must explore and understand the universe and especially our local solar system feels like a turning point where we can open up this experience for more people this is a new era of the unbelievable where a teacher from north carolina gets to go to space it was amazing the energy, the feel, everything about it. There is Miko main engine cutoff. Look at that view. Oh, Jesus. Looking out the window and seeing the black sky, curvature of the earth. Holy. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And the windows are huge. Wow. Absolutely huge. <laughs> The way business looking down and like pretty cool. I'll love every second of it. What you have given me is the most profound experience I can imagine. What I've just been, been through, I've been dreaming about all my life almost like an out-of-body experience to see the earth from that perspective and understand how small of a part we are of something so large.
Eddie, I can't help but think that these are modern day barnstormers. I mean, pioneers, each and every one of them, just as today's crew is. This is the 21st mission for the program. Every flight for New Shepard is another step towards our mission of building a road to space for the benefit of Earth. Guys, so far we've flown 20 people across four human flights. Today brings us up to 25 people, and we plan to nearly double that number by the end of this year. Safety is our highest priority at Blue Origin. It's embedded in every part of the New Shepard vehicle design and launch operation. Prior to our first human flight last summer, we went through a rigorous test program to certify the vehicle was safe to fly humans. And on our last flight, we flew Gary Lai, the architect of New Shepard. He designed New Shepard safety systems. It was such a proud moment for him to represent Team Blue on that flight. Absolutely something that we'll be talking about for years to come. You know, Kaya, Gary's been doing these fireside chats with our employees, talking about what it was like for him up there, looking through those very large windows that he helped design. And it's true, it's a big shift in perspective to see Earth from space. And that's because our vision is millions of people living and working in space for the benefit of Earth. It's a long-term, multi-generational vision where we move heavy and polluting industry into space to save Earth. And to make that happen, we need reusable launch vehicles, which are capable of flying over and over again, which is why New Shepard, the vehicle six more people are about to fly on today, is the first step in achieving that vision. This rocket is designed for suborbital space tourism and research markets, but we also built it to learn how to make human spaceflight routine, safe, and low cost so that we can use effectively the limitless resources of space for the benefit of Earth. New Shepard was built from the beginning to fly people. It also enables us to gain experience with many of the techniques and technologies needed for orbital human flight, but at a far lower cost, a faster flight rate, and in a larger market. The experience we're gaining on New Shepard helps us build confidence in the future success of New Glenn and all of our future programs. Absolutely. Well, we're under T minus 53 minutes until launch. Moments ago, Kevin Sprogue, this mission's crew member seven, the cruise trainer and guide across the entire astronaut experience, presented a challenge coin that will fly with each of today's astronauts. Soon, they're going to exit the training center and stand by in their Rivians. That's right. They're standing by awaiting mission controls. Official go to begin the astronaut load and process. At that point, they will travel down the road to space to the launch pad, ascend the tower, briefly stand by in the safety shelter before crossing the gantry and ingressing into the crew capsule. And Capcom, its capsule communicator, Laura Stiles, will be communicating with them from hatch closed through the entire flight all the way to touchdown. Let's pause it here for a moment while we wait for the crew to get into their Rivians and await the go call for mission control. And here they are, the crew of NS21, getting into their Rivians. What a great morning for a launch. I'm sure they're excited. And hopefully we get a shot here of Katya getting into her Rivian. Her story is just fantastic. 
She's had a passion for STEM since she was a child, and she's currently pursuing her master's degree in electrical engineering at Johns Hopkins. She's really made it her mission to inspire women and minorities to pursue STEM careers. Katya C is sponsored by Space for Humanity, a nonprofit founded by NS19 astronaut Dylan Taylor, with the mission to expand access to space for all of humanity. Yes, and Dylan's NS19 crewmates, Lane and Cameron Bess, have also provided financial support for Katya C. It's inspiring to see Blue Origin's astronaut community come together and help provide access to space. Now, recently, Katya had a spirited conversation with the Executive Director of Space for Humanity, Rachel Lyons. Let's watch. I'm excited to tell you that you will be our citizen astronaut number one, and you're going to space. <laughs> My mom is going to freak out. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am an electrical engineer who has been fascinated with space for her entire life. Space has always been a part of just who I am, who I've always been. So this experience is truly just life-changing. And I think I still kind of don't fully believe it yet. <laughs> Something that we're really passionate about with Space for Humanity is defining what it means to be a commercial astronaut or a citizen astronaut. And I'm so grateful to say that your ticket was partially funded by a number of former Blue Origin astronauts. I think it's so beautiful that you mentioned that because it's really important to begin sharing these experiences and that these things are out there for us. You're also going to be the first Mexican-born woman <laughs> to go to space. So what what is it like for you to be this kind of trailblazer? It's definitely been very humbling. I am really passionate about my community, and I'm really passionate about women, and particularly women from Latin America, because me making it, for me, is, is just not enough. So my goal with this journey that I'm about to go on in this flight is to take everyone with me, to take my community with me. So with that, Katia, what is one message that you'd love to give to women and minorities, to anyone listening and watching, anyone who has a dream? But something that you truly, truly want to do, it's really important to not listen to those voices around you that might be telling you that you're not good enough, that you're not worth it, that you're never going to make it. Because if I had listened to at least one of them, then I wouldn't be here about to go to space. Hi, that's incredible. There you have it. Don't listen to the naysayers. She's a trailblazer and she's inspiring young women and minorities all over to pursue careers in STEM and maybe themselves become astronauts. And I am so excited, Eddie. She's the first Mexican-born woman to fly to space and the youngest American woman. So we are just can't wait for Katya to experience the ride of a lifetime. All right, well, we are just at T minus 47 minutes until launch. We're standing by uh, waiting for our astronauts to get the go for astronaut load into their Rivians. So while we wait for that, let's send it back to the rocket.
Hello, everyone. If you're just joining us, welcome to Blue Origin's fifth human flight. As you can see, our astronauts are loaded up in the rings and they're headed out to the launch pad. That's right. They've got the official go for astronaut load in and they're on their way to the rocket there. We saw friends and family, Team Blue, gathered in spirit to give them a proper send off on this road to space. I know that friends and family of our astronauts have traveled from far, far away. We have folks here from Brazil, from the UAE, really International Day here in West Texas. And we're just so proud, right? We say here at Blue Origin that we're building a road to space. That road to space is here in Van Horn in Far West Texas, and we're getting a great shot of that and the Rivians today. And they're just passing mission control there. As you can see, some hands waving. And there's the New Shepard operations and maintenance team that prepared the rocket for launch today, waving the astronauts good luck and Godspeed. So while these astronauts travel the two-mile road to space to the launch pad, we'll discuss that today's crew continued the tradition of making postcards on behalf of Club for the Future, Blue Origin's nonprofit focused on inspiring the next generation to pursue careers in STEM and help imagine the future of life in space. Our astronauts are going to take their cards with them to space and back today. We've received postcards from all around the world, New Zealand, India, Bulgaria. We really wanted to give a special shout out to the hundreds of schools in Bulgaria who are watching the launch today. Welcome. All right, well, as our astronauts continue to make their way to the rocket, let's meet today's crew. In seat number one is Evan Dick, back for a second trip to space. Evan flew just a few months ago on our third human flight. When we asked him why he wanted to come back, he said, and I quote, I cannot articulate how beautiful the New Shepard experience was. My actions speak louder than my words. He's an ATP rated pilot and lifelong adventurer. And Evan even collected with blue on today's mission patch design. So welcome back, Evan. That's right, Kaya. Welcome back, Evan. In seat number two is Victor Correa España. He's a civil production engineer from Brazil who's forever dreamed of becoming an astronaut. Victor's seat is sponsored by the Crypto Space Agency, whose mission is to combine the space industry's technology with the innovation and financial power of the crypto markets in order to accelerate humankind's off-world future. Victor's name was chosen, get this, Kaya, at random after he bought an NFT that gave him the opportunity to fly to space on New Shepard. Today, Victor fulfills his lifelong passion for space by seeing it firsthand. Bem-vindo, Victor, e boa sorte hoje. And in seat number three is jet pilot and chairman of Action Aviation, Hamish Harding. In 2019, he and former International Space Station Commander Colonel Terry Virts broke the global circumnavigation record for flying an aircraft over the North and South Poles. They did it in just 46 hours, 40 minutes, and 22 seconds. Today, Hamish's life of adventures and pursuits carries him to space. Victor Vescovo is in seat number four. Victor is a commercially rated and multi-engine jet and helicopter pilot and an explorer in the truest sense of the word. He's one of a handful of people on Earth who've completed the Explorer's Grand Slam, summiting the world's seven summits and skiing to both the North and South Poles. He's also the first person to visit the deepest point in all five of the world's oceans and having visited the five deeps in the first submersible vehicle to return to multiple sorry, to return for multiple visits. Just like New Shepard, this is another example of reusable technology at work, opening up the boundaries of exploration and enabling people to do so over and over again. Katia Echazarreta is in seat number five. Born in Guadalajara, Mexico, Katia will become the first Mexican-born woman to fly to space. In addition to her STEM leadership, she's also the co-host of YouTube series Netflix IRL, which stands for In Real Life in which she debunks movie scenes using scientific experimentation. She also played Electric Cat on the CBS show Mission Unstoppable. And prior to that, she spent nearly four years working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Katya is making an impact on space. And today, we hope that space will make an impact on Katya. 
Dream Variation Ventures co-founder Jason Robinson is in seat number six today. Jason's had a lifelong passion for adventure and space. He's an avid skydiver, skydiver and has even broken the sound barrier in a MiG-29 fighter jet. You might recognize him as a finalist on Survivor in 2009. He recently funded two Stanford scholarships for African and African-American students interested in STEM in honor of today's trip to space. Gaia, this is an incredibly accomplished crew that is forever linked by their collective passion for adventure and space. Absolutely, Eddie, and it appears that they're starting to climb the launch tower right now. So as our crew, the fifth human flight, gets closer to launch, let's introduce you to a special human of blue, Maretch Ongok. He goes by Mo and supports the new Glenn program. How he got to Blue is a wonderful origin story. My name is Marej Ango and I work at Blue Origin. I was born in South Sudan. I grew up uh, in a village where there was no water, there was no electricity. It was just a hut. When I was a little kid, I would always look up and looking at the stars and always wondering, what's up there? And when I came to America as a refugee, I started going to school and just learning everything that I could. I was and watching a lot of Star Trek inspired me to say, oh yeah, we can design vehicles that can take us there. So after high school, I got my degree in engineering physics. My dream is to go into space. And so from that childhood moment of looking up into the stars to where I am today, it has always been inspired by the ability to somehow one day make it into space. So I work on the second stage of New Glenn. It's the biggest project I've ever seen. The sheer size of the amount of stuff that it can carry is very, very impressive. New Glenn is the baseline, really, for the road to space. It will be the thing that takes us up to orbit and beyond. I'm the senior configurator, so if the teams are having a challenge on integration, I'm the one that facilitates all of those technical resolutions of the issues. It's a very exciting team with very, very smart people. I mean, oh my God. I stay inspired by keeping the dream in front of me. And I definitely believe that within my lifetime, I will be able to travel to space. And I want to go to the moon, Mars, the outer solar systems, the Kuiper belt, you name it. The sooner the better. Kaya, I still remember Mo's interview. He was a superstar. He knocked it out of the park. And this is just an example of the incredible story and one of many for all of our employees. Come join Mo and the rest of Team Blue solving ambitious problems as we build a road to space. We have hundreds of positions open across all our facilities in Washington State, Florida, Texas, Alabama, Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, Arizona, Colorado, and California. That's right, Eddie. We're growing so fast, and we would love to see all of you out here at Blue one day. Okay, well, our astronauts are currently standing by in the safety shelter. Once the ingress begins, they'll ring the bell across the, and cross the gantry into the crew capsule. Kaya, we've adopted this welcoming tradition of ringing the bell uh, from the ISS, and we've made it our own. So let's sit tight and listen in to our astronauts ringing in the new era of commercial spaceflight.
Our astronauts have now completed crossing our gantry and soon they'll climb into the crew capsule, but for now they're gonna stop and take a couple photographs. That's a great team picture, almost as good as ring where they're standing in front of the rocket at its base. I don't know about you, Eddie, but to say that that picture is a keepsake is such an understatement. Oh, it's such a beautiful morning today to clear blue skies, and they've got a rocket that's all chilled in with cryogenic propellants behind them that's effectively alive. Oh, it's quite the picture. There they go, climbing into the crew capsule and strapping into their seats. As ingress continues and crew member seven helps our crew into the crew capsule, let's take a moment to discuss some of the personal things each astronaut will fly with today. Evan's bringing his NS-19 mission patch and football that flew on his previous flight signed by Michael Strahan and the rest of the crew. One of the things Victor Correa España is bringing with him is a Brazilian flag with their motto, Orden y Progreso, as a way to bring his entire country with him on the journey. Hamish is bringing a cup with a written dedication to his wife. This same cup has also made the journey down to the Mariana Trench. Victor Vescovo is bringing two rocks that traveled way down with him to Challenger Deep and several equally well-traveled Omega watches. Katya is flying with a Mexican flag, photos of her family, and NASA she had since she was 16, when the thought of working in the space industry, let alone flying to space, was just a dream. Que viva Mexico. Jason bringing signed art from his son, James, and it's got such an inspiring message there. Dad, I love you to the moon and back. What words to start today's journey? As the crew of Fifth Human Life continues to get for launch, in a moment, Capcom Laura Stiles will go around the horn for an initial comms check with our astronauts. While we wait for that, one of the crew, Katya Echazarreta, has a growing community across the channels. For those folks, and for you right now, she recently recorded a special message. Hola a todos. Muy pronto me convertí en la primera mujer nacida en México en el espacio. Quiero dedicarle este vuelo al espacio a mi país y a toda la comunidad latinoamericana. Mi deseo es que veas esta misión, creas en ti y sepas que puede ser el próximo. Así es. Muchísimos saludos a nuestros tapatíos de Guadalajara y a los latinos por todo el mundo que nos acompañan hoy. Qué privilegio para nosotros acontecer esta aventura con Katia. She really is a trailblazer and I'm so excited that she's bringing us all along with her on today's voyage. Absolutely, I know the folks in Guadalajara and all over Mexico will be cheering on their very own today as she flies to space.
copy. Astronaut Hamish. Copy. Astronaut VB. Astronaut VB. All good. Astronaut Copy and astronaut Valiant Thor. Copy. We are at T minus twenty seven minutes and counting. As we proceed here, I'm gonna do my best to keep you updated. For now, just sit back and relax. As you just heard, our Capcom Mara Styles can hear our astronauts loud and clear. I don't know if you noticed, but next to Laura was the very own Charlie Duke. That's incredible. Charlie was the, the lunar module pilot on Apollo 16, but most notably in his position right now at Capcom, he was Capcom for Apollo 11. And those of you who have been following the space industry and are Apollo fans like Eddie and I are, he is known for saying, tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Those are some very historic lines and very well known in our industry. Uh, Kaya, you just had dinner with Charlie the other night? I did. I was fortunate to meet Charlie and his wife, Dorothy. Um, amazing people. Charlie has stories for days. Uh, I sit there and listen to him just tell stories about uh, volunteering with Jim Lovell to float around in the capsule out in the ocean for three days. Um, the amount of things that these Apollo astronauts went through to have the right stuff to fly to space. What an incredible rich history we have um, and a treat and surprise for our astronauts today. So when that hatch is closed, he'll come over the line and surprise our astronauts. Until then, let's sit tight and watch the rocket. Okay, we have a very special guest today. I have sitting with me for the pre-launch part, uh, Apollo 16 astronaut and the famous Capcom from the moon landing, Charlie Duke, and he has a message for you this morning. Uh, this is uh, uh, Charlie Duke. Uh, congratulations on uh, uh, this uh, flight that you're about to embark on, uh, NS-21. Uh, uh, Godspeed. I uh, know you're going to have an exciting adventure, uh, just as I did 52 year, 50 years ago. Uh, so uh, have a great ride, and uh, I look forward to seeing you when you uh, get back. Uh, uh, Godspeed. And as you could see there, the hatch is officially closed. Well, Eddie, can you help walk us through what happens from here? Before we get to that, can I just say that I want Charlie Duke to be my Capcom when I go to space? That's <laughs> incredible. I'm so excited. But as you asked and as you pointed out, the hatch is closed. The team is working towards ensuring alignment. The flight director has orchestrated all of these parallel work streams from the booster system, the capsule system, to the ground systems. And they are all working to reach the final go, no-go pole together, ensuring their individuals and Please are met so that here shortly we can go for launch. All right, well, while uh, we continue to wait, uh, we'll just keep an eye on the rocket as the astronauts are strapped into their seats. They're getting pretty excited, Eddie. They're about to head to space. This is it. What an adventure in store for them today. So let's toss it to the rocket while we uh, wait for that countdown clock to get closer to T zero.
Thanks for joining us on our fifth human flight. Evan Dick, Victor Correa Espana, Hamish Harding, Victor Vescovo, Jason Robinson, and the first Mexican-born woman to fly to space, Katia Echazarreta, are loaded into the RSS First Step, ready for their life-changing flight to space and back. Kaya, RSS means reusable spaceship. This capsule has already gone to space six times. Operational reusability is how we achieve our long-term vision. Reusing vehicles, turning them around quickly, this is all essential to reducing the cost of access to space. This vehicle is currently designed for 25 uses, but over time we'll strive to quadruple that number. Okay, well we're just under T minus 21 minutes until launch. For the past few days, the people on top of that rocket have been down in West Texas training and preparing. Let's take a closer look at the crew of Fifth Human Flight, who've named themselves Natural Selection. At age five, we watched Buzz and Neil walking on the moon, and I wanted to be part of this program all through my childhood. I remember when I looked at the sky and see the stars, this curiosity made me dream to be a, an astronaut. I was seven years old telling everyone, I'm going to work at NASA, I'm going to go to space. I constantly heard that this was not for me, but I never cared, so I did it. I worked at NASA Jet Propulsion Lab and I've worked on five NASA missions. It's just a dream come true. I've wanted to do this my entire life. And I told my wife on our second date, I'm going to space someday, and you have to be okay with that. I've been told I'll be the first person to go to the bottom of the ocean, to climb Mount Everest, and go into space. Being the first Mexican-born woman and the youngest American woman in space, I think it's so important to start making the demographics of space look like the demographics of our world. I'm Brazilian, and I will be the second Brazilian to go to space. I've always wanted to do this, and the, the sheer experience of looking out of the window is something I'm looking forward to. It's eye-opening, it's beautiful, it's, it's indescribable. Oh I mean, I knew after I saw it that I wanted to go again. I mean, I knew immediately. I am just so excited to be able to witness this in person, and I am fully expecting waterworks for sure. <laughs> this is the only thing I've ever really, really, really wanted to do, and I just can't believe this happened. I'm living a dream, and I represent this dream for more than 200 million of Brazilians. This is going to be just an epic, exciting, fun adventure. We've heard time and time again from our astronauts that they emerge from this experience inspired. They've not only made lifelong friends, but their perspective about our Earth's fragility is forever changed. Kaya, I'm an engineer at heart, and it's always been about engineering for me, but these stories are just incredible. In a moment, Capcom, Laura Stiles will read a special message from the crew of our last human flight. Stay tuned. and the tower crew are departing, we have some very special messages to share with you from the crew of NS-20. From astronaut George Neal, you're about to embark on an incredible journey. 
one that will provide you with an entirely new perspective of our breathtakingly beautiful Earth. Pay attention to what you see, what you hear, and what you feel. It's going to be an awesome experience, so sit back, relax, and enjoy every moment. From astronaut Mark Cable, crew of NS21, you're about to experience three things. One, the most professional and gracious group of Blue Origin Associates to assist and train you. Two, the physical aspect, a ride to space. Repeat that to yourselves, a ride to space. It excites me every time I say it. And three, the emotional impact that is indescribable of the view, our home planet, and the darkness of space. From astronaut Sharon Hagel, after today, your life will never be the same. Once you see the world from a different perspective, you have a responsibility to make the world a better place. It is an emotional experience. And with that being said, as the engines ignite and you feel the thrust, have fun and enjoy the ride. Godspeed. From astronaut Marty Allen, they say in real estate, it's all about location and view. And in a few minutes, you will be in a location that few have ever been. And that location comes with a million dollar view, one that you will never ever forget. So enjoy both, it does not last long. And know you are in good hands with Blue Origin. I will watch and relive my experience through you all. Astronaut Jim Kitchen. Dear NS21 crew family, there are so many takeaways from this incredible experience on which you've embarked. Breaking through boundaries, never giving up on dreams such as going to space, and that anything is possible. Eight billion people have walked our planet, yet only few more than 600 have witnessed what you'll soon be seeing outside your window, our beautiful borderless Earth from space. Relax, smile, breathe, and be completely present. And may that view forever be etched in your memory and make you ever more humbled, compassionate, and dedicated to doing good. And finally, from Blue Origin's own Gary Lai, you are about to experience something so intense and moving that for the rest of your life, you will mark the person you become as different at your core than the person that came before. Enjoy this time as you will relive it vividly and daydream every day for a long time to come. Beautiful messages. Copy all. First step, blue control. We are working through the last steps here. The last steps here. Twenty one to sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. I've just heard New Shepard is escape enabled. Eddie, can you help share with the viewers what's the significance of this moment? Kaya, we've said here many times at Blue Origin, we started the webcast today, um, it's all about safety. Escape enabled is a pivotal moment in the flight preparation where the full envelope escape system is active, ensuring the astronauts are safe throughout all phases of flight. Absolutely, thank you, Eddie. All right, we're going to continue to wait. So while we wait, uh, let's send it back to the rocket.
As you may see at the top of your screen, we just entered a brief hole. So while we wait, um, we're gonna just keep looking at the rocket in beautiful West Texas. That's right, Kaya. We're just waiting for all of our systems to be aligned ahead of the final go, no go pole. That'll be the final gate for launch today. And we have cleared the hold. The countdown clock has resumed on its way to T0. We are just waiting here for the final go, no go poll at the instruction of the flight director. Let's stay tuned. This is the flight director on channel one and UHF voice for the go pole uh, for terminal count and launch. Capsule. Go. Booster. Go. Ground. Go. Safety. Go. Capcom. Go. Engineering. Go. First step, this is your flight director, New Shepard, is go for launch. Booster, commence the terminal count. Welcome flight. 
Okay, as you just heard, we are a go for launch for our fifth human flight. The six people on that rocket are about to fly to space in just a few minutes. All right, well, as we tick down to launch, Eddie, can you talk us through New Shepard's flight profile? Kaya, I'd love to. Uh, the flight profile really starts at T minus two and a half minutes when we enter auto sequence and the flight controllers become hands off. The booster does it what it can to prepare the BE3PM for ignition at T0 followed by throttle up. Liftoff occurs at T plus seven seconds and that BE3 engine powers the booster up through the atmosphere just before reaching max Q, the maximum point of aerodynamic pressure. Um, the B3 continues to work up to two minutes. It experiences Miko main engine cutoff, and then those two vehicles separate at two and a half minutes. The booster achieves apogee, and it reuses its aerodynamic surfaces and fins to steer back to the landing pad. The drag brakes deploy, the engine restarts, and we get a nice soft landing over the landing pad. Uh, meanwhile, in the capsule, our astronauts were enjoying microgravity since it's much slower to re-enter due to its shape. Uh, as it cuts through the atmosphere, the drogues deploy. The mains deploy shortly thereafter, coming down for a nice, soft, floating view of the West Texas desert. The landing systems engage just above the ground with the terminal deceleration system sending a jet of gas, a poof of dust, and then touchdown. All right, well, we're just under T minus six minutes until liftoff. So let's take a quick breather while we wait for New Shepard's bit checks. It appears that we've just entered another brief hold, so let's stand by while our astronauts wait to launch to space.
right when we just exited the hold, the countdown clock is resuming. And I understand that all six astronauts are ready to go. Let's watch and listen as New Shepard goes through its final checks and revs up for fifth human flight. Here in less than 20 seconds, we'll be entering auto sequence mode. I, I know this is supposed to be business as usual, but I'm excited. Never gets old, Eddie. And these astronauts sitting on top of the rocket, they're hearing it all. The hum of the hydraulic power unit, the batteries, the valves clicking on and off. They've practiced for this moment over the last few days. I think they're ready to go to space. That rocket is alive. It's a living, breathing thing, and it is about to take six people to space and one astronaut for the second time. And we've got the Axis bridge retracting and those solar shades retracting away from the New Shepard capsule. Just about 90 seconds here, we see the aft fins, those fins at the base of the vehicle that help direct the vehicle on ascent and descent, exercising their full range of motion. And at the bottom of your screen, the BE-3 propulsion module nozzle gimbling. This is the primary form of control for the vehicle on ascent and, of course, for landing, doing a full range of checks, ensuring free range of motion. And those tanks are at pressure. There's variables for pressure and temperature on the cryogenic tanks in the green zone. That's what they're watching in mission control. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hand it over to Mission Control and launch this rocket. Godspeed, New Shepard. Buena suerte. liftoff at 3,700 feet above MSL. That's about how far we are above sea level out here in launch site one. And that BE-3 engine rumble really coming through as the vehicle approaches the maximum dynamic pressure, the point where the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle are at their maximum. That BE-3 engine will throttle back just a little bit. And there we have it, Max Q. We're getting such a roar. Um, sitting here in, in West Texas right now, we can hear that BE-3 engine just roaring through the sky. That's right, really doing work to power the New Shepard propulsion module and capsule to space.
Here in about 30 seconds, Kaya will see the BE3 PM engine shut off for main engine cutoff, Nico. And Miko, main engine cutoff. The vehicle is now coasting at over 2,000 miles per hour. Okay, we should have separation of the capsule and the booster here momentarily. Laura Stiles will cue the astronauts to unbuckle their harnesses and start floating around the capsule. Victor Vescovo, Katia Chacerreta, Hamish Harding, Jason Robinson, Victor Correa España, and Evan Dick are now in zero G. Let's listen in. We just received confirmation the crew capsule's apogee of 351,183 feet. Yeah. 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 One minute warning. One minute warning. Well, Kai, it really sounded like they were having a lot of fun in that 15 cubic meter cabin. Congratulations to all six crew. They just officially became astronauts. Outstanding. Both the crew capsule and the booster are now descending, as you can see on your screen. <laughs> And we'll follow the booster first for landing. That rocket is now reaching its atmospheric pierce point, returning from space and entering the atmospheres. The control surfaces of the fins are now starting to have air pressure to push against and to navigate to over the landing pad. And that booster is now reaching its maximum re-entry velocity, which is just under Mach 4. The booster shape causes a lot less drag than the crew capsule, so it'll win the race back down to the ground. And we've got a great shot there from the booster coming back from space to our landing pad. The wedge fins, steering fins, and ring fin really earning their keep at this point in the flight.
and you can just see that the air brakes are deploying here. This is such a critical step in slowing the vehicle down. Velocity starts to decrease very rapidly. You can follow along on the type, top right corner of your screen. And we just heard the sonic booms. Loud and clear. And there's the BPM engine relit, confirmed, coming down for a nice soft landing. And booster touchdown. Welcome back, New Shepard. Welcome back to our six astronauts. For a lot of us at Blue, this moment in flight is one of the main highlights as it shows off the incredible engineering required to bring a rocket back safely home from space, ready to be reused. No matter how many times you've seen this happen, a live booster landing onto the pad will always take your breath away. And I know that our six astronauts right now, they're sitting in their capsule, enjoying the view as it slowly descends down. In the meantime, we've got quite a shot there of the booster and there's the capsule re-entering. And here are the droves deploying now. These droves will slow the capsule down in preparation for the three main chutes. And there we have it, the three main chutes. Wow, look at those huge windows. Maybe we can see our astronauts if we look closely. While those beautiful parachutes are essential in providing a gentle touchdown for the crew capsule, New Shepard also has an innovative retro thrust system on the bottom of the capsule to make the touchdown even smoother for our astronauts flying today. And as that capsule slowly descends, that retro th thrust system soon will fire moments before touchdown to slow the capsule down even further, just to one or two miles per hour. What a great shot there. Guadalupe Peak, the tallest mountain in Texas behind, of course, our three parachutes and our six astronauts in their crew capsule. Now, Kaya, keep in mind that here in West Texas, uh, in the desert, uh, we kick up a tremendous amount of dust, uh, but it is a very, very soft landing. And touchdown, welcome back to Earth, New Shepard's astronauts. They just went to space and they are back. That's right. Welcome back, the crew of Natural Selection. So Kaya, our team is preparing landing safety operations and the recovery of our astronauts from the crew capsule. You know, Kaya, depending on where the crew capsule landed in the desert today can sort of dictate how long it will take our recovery crew to get out there, but they are on their way right now, and hopefully we get a shot of that here shortly. That's the fun part, being in those Rivians, flying down that dirt road. It's kicking up moon dust, very similar to moon dust, uh, that West Texas sand. Yeah, you're dodging cacti and mesquite bushes and just trying to get to the astronauts as quickly, but as safely as possible. And you can see that trail of dust being kicked up right now as they're headed out to the capsule.
I think that's Victor with a thumbs up to us. He looks happy. I don't know about you, Eddie, but I'm really excited to hear Evan Dick's second perspective of going up in space. I know this time he wanted to spend more time looking out the window and enjoying the view. So here shortly, Kevin spoke, our crew members and for today's mission, we'll be leading the recovery team. We'll verify that all astronauts are giving him thumbs up and happy smiling faces, and then we'll get ready to open the hatch and welcome them back to Earth. Well, there you have it, Kaya. Two reusable spacecraft rocket launch vehicles named New Shepard and RSS First Step. I always love these shots where you have both the booster and the capsule. I know on the way down, the astronauts are always looking out their window to see if they can see that booster coming back down to uh, land. And there's a great shot of those trucks, like we said, cutting through the West Texas desert, avoiding the cacti and the mesquite bushes. And just behind our capsule recovery team are the friends, family, loved ones of our astronauts. They've traveled far and wide all across the world. And I know that they're very excited to greet their, their newly minted astronauts when they exit that crew capsule. That's right, a very joyous reunion when friends and family are able to meet the astronauts after they step out of that hatch. And there they are, crew capsule and trucks in the same shot, arriving, as we mentioned, anxiously awaiting this reunion. You got it. So what's going to happen is Kevin Spro, crew member seven, is going to get out. They're going to secure the capsule and make sure that it's safe before opening the hatch. What an action shot, that booster in the background venting its propellants and Kevin Sprogue sprinting to the crew capsule to check on his astronauts. Seeing some thumbs up there, Kaya, this is exciting. Okay, I didn't count, but that looked like six thumbs up to me. What an incredible moment. Absolutely. Our astronauts have returned home safely, and we're preparing to exit the crew capsule. That really was flawless from here. It appeared to be a safe launch and landing. Congratulations to the New Shepard Operations Mission Team for doing it.
So we're just moments away before they open the hatch. They're just finalizing preparations here. Uh, looks like the stairs are now set up, so should be any moment now. And they'll exit this crew capsule in the opposite order that they entered, each hopefully triumphantly um, enjoying their return to space, sorry, to Earth. And there they are, the astronauts standing up, unbuckling their harnesses and touching terra firma. Okay, you can see there in Kevin's left hand, he's got the key to the hatch as we're anxiously awaiting it opening. Saw a thumbs up there from Kevin. He's opening the hatch. And the hatch is open. Welcome back, New Shepherd. Let's see if we can recognize some of our newly minted astronauts as they exit the hatch. I think that was Evan Dick. That was Evan Dick giving the high five. Welcome back from your second time to space. A veteran now of the New Shepherd journey. There's Hamish with the high five to Kevin. There's Vic Espana. Tarreta. Victor Vescovo. And last but definitely not least, Jason Robinson. That's the crew. That's the crew of NS21. Congratulations, Natural Selection, for your trip to space and back. Right now, as they pose for pictures, I know they're waiting for their families. They're going to be arriving any minute now. They're going to be getting out of their vehicles, and I'm going to see a lot of hugs in just a few moments.
Thank you everyone for joining us today for Blue Origin's fifth human flight. A special thank you to our customers, Katya Echezarreta, Evan Dick, Jason Robinson, Victor Vescovo, Hamish Harding, and Victor Correa España. If you're interested in purchasing your seat on a future rocket ride to space and back, it all starts by visiting blueorigin.com and clicking that link, fly to space. Eddie, thank you so much for joining me here today. Anytime, Kaya. This was a lot of fun, and we see the astronauts having a lot of fun. Cuánta emoción y qué orgullo para nuestro equipo, Team Blue. Well, there you have it. The road to space is being built. We took another big step today. If you're interested in joining our extraordinary team, please visit our website. And if you'd like to commemorate today's launch, we have mission patches, including the one Evan Dick helped us design, and so much more online. My name is Kaya Ehrlich, and for Eddie Safer and everybody here at Blue Origin, thank you for joining us, and until our next launch, Grata and Ferocitor. Uh, Godspeed.